evening, everybody, and welcome to episode 85 of Fan Experience TV. Hope you all had a great weekend. Obviously, some some great uh, you know playoff basketball going on, some playoff uh, hockey going on, some results better than the others. Um, I'm sure my yeah. uh, my friend over there can can agree. Uh, for those of you joining us for the first time, my name is Mike Kados. I am your host. Alongside me is my co-host, Rick Molina. I guess, Rick, you could start it off with Yeah, I'm doing well tonight. And Mike. you're a Trey Young. And, uh, you know, we'll go, get it. Uh, go first of all, welcome our viewers to the show. Uh, I hope everybody had a great weekend. It was nice out. Good time. NBA basketball started. Uh, the Suns stunned the Lakers, taking game one. The Nets cruising along. They're up right now by like 25 points, I think, on the Celtics. But we'll begin with the New York Knicks, who... You know, the, the city was rocking. It was a buzz in Manhattan. People are ready, chanting for two days, watching shows on YouTube. And then the Knicks come out, and that first quarter, the nervous jitters, nervous. You know, they were just nervous, breaking a lot of shots. But as the game evolved, that damn Trey Young started hit, going into the paint and laying up buckets, and the Knicks go down big early. They make a run. They get the lead. Uh, but they couldn't pull away. And we got to talk about Julius Randle, who had just an awful game, 6 of 24 from the field. And he looked like the moment was too big for him. He looked scared. He looked like the 19, 20 Julius Randle, who just couldn't play in front of a New York mm -hmm. crowd, couldn't handle it. And that's what happened. And you could tell during the course of the game, he started losing his confidence. He started giving the ball away. And all of a sudden, players like IQ came in and just fearless. Obi Toppin, the other rookie, came in, had five points, but he shot a three, had a monster dunk. Uh, Alex Burks came in and had 30, uh, at least yeah. 30 points. I mean, he played a monster. Yeah, what did they game. have, like 60 something points off the bench? Right? Yeah, they had like 60, I think uh -huh. it was like 64 points on the bench. So their second unit led us, but Alfred Payton just, he can't handle Trey Young. Um, Reggie Bullock just like froze. He couldn't hit the side of the barn. It was terrible. And, you know, at the end of the game, you know, Tibbs brings in Nilakina, cold off the bench to handle Trey Young. Trey Young goes right, puts a, you know, gets a layup and 107 105, and the Knicks lose. But, you know, Julius Randle, you know, you, you cannot come out in a game one and have a performance like no. he did. You just can't choke. Nope. Like, and if whether it's the bright lights in New York or whatever it was, he couldn't. He had a horrible game. And you have to ask the question now, what's Tibbs going to do game two if he starts breaking shots like that, if he starts playing afraid? I mean, I, I want to see more IQ. I want to see more Obi Toppin. I want to see pick and roll with Obi Toppin at the top of the key. I want to see pick and roll with Obi and, and IQ on the wings. And you got to get something going here because it, it, and RJ, RJ had a good game, but he he was seventy three sixty six. He could extend that lead to ten. He missed an open three from the corner, and away it went. So Lou Williams yeah. took over in that third quarter and kept him close. So you know, listen, next game two, I'm not worried yet, but they got to come out in the game two. They got to take it to Young. They got to get him out of his comfort zone. They can't let him go into the paint like that. And Nerlens Noel and the rest of the team just have to come out and dominate. So, listen, it's, it's going to be a fun night tomorrow night. We'll wait and see. But uh, tough start for the NBA playoffs for our beloved Knicks. Yeah, well, uh, Derek Rose and, 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 and Burks were – Oh, he was incredible. He, the, yeah, they, they were the ones incredible. keeping keeping them in the game. Right, and, you know, game. for Julius Randle, if he's going to want a big contract, like he can't perform like that. And it's, you know, that's just not going to happen. Too long in between home games, Matt yeah. says. Yeah, I know. It's I know. It's it's, it's 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 money. The Nets are playing tonight. Yeah. Uh, you know, so obviously they don't want to put them on the same nights and you know, they, they want to get as much viewership as they possibly can, yeah. as many people in the arenas as they possibly can. Obviously they're going to sell out anyway, but yes. You know, definitely the TV viewership. You, you can't have uh Nets and Knicks yeah. you know fighting each other. Um, and we and let's also TV. and all talk about the fans with the, the F uh, F Trey Young chant out there. Yeah, I mean, yeah. You, yeah. you want an F? You want an F Trey Young? Yeah. Well, F you. And, you the, and then De Blasio out there saying, "Don't hunt for fouls. Play, play the right way." Like, come on. The mayor just needs to be quiet, pipe down, mind your business. Let these guys handle it on the court. But the fans are great. They're going to be great tomorrow night. It's going to be electric tomorrow night. It's going to be real intense. Can't wait to see it. Yeah, hundred percent. You know, I mean, it's it's the playoffs. I mean, yeah. it's. That's just the uh, the way it is. Uh, in other news, uh, yeah, like you said, that the the Nets are up um, a decent margin right mm -hmm. now. They are leading the series one one nothing, yeah. and uh, you know they they just keep this up. You know they can uh, have a nice little lead uh, going uh, 
going back to Boston. Let's not forget um, uh, the, the Islanders. The Islanders are leading their series with the Penguins three games to two. Um, <laughs> so, shocking. I'm stunned. And they're, and, they're, and they're coming back home tomorrow, mm-hmm. you know, so let's – Let's see if uh, they can close it out at home. Um, well, one of their many homes, apparently. Yeah, apparently. But, uh, you know, whatever the case is. Um, yeah, Finally, we have to get your Mets, Mike, and I'll let you take this over. Of, yes, uh, speaking of first home thing, teams, um, you know, it's fitting that you know, this is uh, episode 85. I was born in 85, so that was naturally <laughs> the year I became a Mets fan. Uh, and it's also naturally the number of Mets players on the injured list right now. Uh, Syndergaard went down again. Carrasco's out until late June, maybe early July. Yeah. Jacob DeGrom came back. He's pitching tonight. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I mean, it's if Tim Tebow did not sign with the Jacksonville Jaguars, he'd be starting in center field today. Think about that. Think about uh, that for a that, second. That that is how pressed they are. You know, people are trying to recruit Matthew Broderick and the Ferris Bueller to play center field. Yeah, uh, so. Steve Cohen is uh, sending out tweets that he want. You know, he's asking people who's who's ready to suit up. Um, you know, three three and seven in the last ten games. They're sitting barely and holding on to a, a first place lead by a game right now, but. Uh, it, things are getting worse faster than they're getting better right now. Um, and I, I don't know. I mean, they, something's got to give. I, I mean, I get it. Injuries happen, but these are just co- coming at an alarming rate. Yeah. And, uh, you, and you got the one person that is healthy, which is Lindor. And you got uh, people, you know, saying he's not worth his contract. And it's, it's way too small of a sample size. Number one. And, uh, I don't know if it's just – it's probably just trolls, but, you know, going after Jordan Yamamoto's wife the other day, come on, people, you know. I, I think it's just trolls because uh, I don't I don't think, yeah. the, the, you know, the Mets fans would, would stoop that low. Um, I could be wrong, but, you know, I, I know that personally, you know, I would not even in a million years go anywhere close to that. Yeah. Um, and I know a lot of people that wouldn't either. So uh, hopefully that's just trolls and they're just people that – that are just doing it to get a rise and, mm-hmm. you know, because they're unhappy with their own life. So uh, yeah, whatever the case is. Yeah. Um, but yeah, your Yankees are rolling six in a row. Well, six Give in us a row. your thoughts real quick. They're starting to come into their own. Obviously, you know, you had the no hitter with Kluber who left the game early with a shoulder soreness. Uh, so something tells me that, uh, yeah, with right shoulder tightness, something tells me that that, uh, oh, that no hitter okay. took some out of him. Uh, so you know he might he might go on the injuries, but listen, the Yankees are starting to round into shape. Torres is starting to hit a little bit. Judge is starting to swing the bat real well. Um, obviously, uh, Hicks is out for a while, stands out. Um, but they're just you know listen, they're chugging along. They're doing the, the Yankee thing, and and uh, you know now that the season's coming into motion, the Yankees are in first place. And look, they're the Yankees. This is what they do. Um, I didn't like the way they started. It wasn't a good start, but. They're rounding about shape, and now you know the question is: Can the can the, uh, the arms in the rotation hold up? And we'll you know do we get Stan and Hicks back healthy mid season to uh, you know get the push to September. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it was it was a it was a tough start for the Yankees, but you you know it's it, the beginning of the season. It's the beginning yeah. of the season. It's cold. It's, they don't want to marathon. Yeah. It isn't a sprint. And uh, you know you mentioned the other chugging away. Speaking about chugging, yes. Let's welcome our next guest. He is the CEO over at Dugout Mugs. Please help us welcome Chris Dennert to the show. What's Chris. going on, boys? Hey, Chris, how are you? Oh, man, doing great. Listening to you talk about the Yankees, man. That's, that's what it's yeah. about. A lot so, of them drink from Dugout Mugs. I got I to gotta cheer for them a little bit. You know what I mean? Oh, no, of, of, of course. I mean, you know, when you're – you know, when, when you're in the industry, you know, that that fan, some of that fandom stuff, you know, kind of uh, kind of goes away a little bit. You know, it, it's it's more yeah. about business than, uh, than and, anything and else. And players. Yeah. You know and what it's mean? players. Like, 
somebody uh, jokingly, they asked me, they're like, hey, who's your favorite team? And I said, whoever's buying mugs, right? <laughs> and, uh, hey, so, yeah. Well, and, and we're in all 30 stadiums. So what does that tell you, right? So um, we're a fan of all the teams, but I'm actually a fan of a lot of the guys. Some of them are just so down to earth, <laughs> just good dudes all the way around. Uh, their wives are amazing. I heard you guys talking about that too. Yeah, some of the wives are just absolutely amazing. Um, so uh, yeah, I'm I'm a big fan of the guys and and you know their little community. My my business partner, the guy that actually thought the idea up, um, he's an ex player, right? So there's a brotherhood about it, and yeah. um, that's been really cool. The baseball community uh, undoubtedly has supported us and carried us a long, long way so far. Yeah, no, it's 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 an amazing story <laughs> on on how it all how it all came to be. And, uh, yeah. you know, we'll definitely dive into it. Uh, but you did grow up a, a, a Rays fan, you know, which obviously the Rays yeah. and the Yankees. Such a Florida guy. I, I yeah. actually was uh, Braves and Cubs because that's what you got. Those are the stations we got, right? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Yes, yeah. 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 yeah, so I'm 40. So I grew up watching Chipper and, uh, oh, God, Sandberg, and the Hawk, Andrew Jones, you Glass, know, Larry. Sandberg, Maddox. <laughs> but then when, uh, you know, being in central Florida, Oh, and I was also a big, um, Indians and Red Sox fan because I was from winter Haven and that's where they trained. Yeah. So they would okay. always come to spring training there. So I got to meet a lot of the guys there and, you know, one of my best, you know, talk about fan experience. One of my best fan experiences with Jim Tomei, um, when he was nice. with the Indians, just a great dude. Oh my God. Just a, such a good human. Um, and just, I mean, stuck with me 30 years later. Right. Yeah. Uh, and I had a chance to meet him in Dallas and we talked about it and laughed about it. And, you know, um, he, he drinks from bats, too. Ironically, it's come full circle. <laughs> a lot of it. A lot of it's come full circle. So it's pretty dope. I got I got mine right here. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I will be getting mine. So. Drink from a bat. I'm like the, I'm like that odd guy out at the party. Like, <laughs> yeah. Anybody that's watching, we basically hollow out bat barrels and turn them into beer mugs yeah. and whiskey mugs and shot glasses and we're just weirdos and we have a lot of fun doing beer and baseball every day no i mean it's an amazing product it's uh you know i love it i love drinking out of this thing it's thanks just, it's awesome i mean i get a little scared because it has a met symbol i I'm, i hope i don't get injured because of the <laughs> um no you might get but, injured uh, taking it out because somebody else wants it that's that's a yeah, reality there that's you go you um, might get mugged for your mug yeah so, uh, you know, before we dive deep into, you know, baseball, dugout mugs, you're also a Tampa Bay Buccaneers fan. So how, yeah. what are your uh, feelings on this this new era of Buccaneers football? Um, I think they put together a hell of a season. Um, I think it's way bigger than Tom Brady, uh, personally. I mean, Tom. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he, it's Thank pretty you. hard to deny that he's great, right? He's the greatest, man. Yeah. The guy's a legend. But uh, they had an incredible defense. They had – um, uh, the, the the offensive weapons came together. They got a couple new guys that really, really fit. Um, so I'm excited. I think, I mean, back to back in any league ever anymore is mm -hmm. just tough. Um, yep. So anybody that can pull that off, God bless. It's not like the the um, oh God, the dynasties of of old, right? Uh, yep. But they're gonna be in the playoffs. I, yeah. I can certainly see that happening. Yeah. yeah, especially this year with, you know, Breeze gone, you know, Julio Jones wanting out, you know, it's uh, yeah. it seems to be that, you know, Buccaneers are on a crash course right for first place. They got some yeah. weapons, man. They got some weapons. Yeah. If they stay healthy, they got some weapons. We're actually doing something with Mike Evans uh, in two weeks. He's got oh, the okay. Mike Evans golf tournament. You know, typically, okay. we only support like baseball, but when it's local. Um, I was talking to the Gronkowski brothers the other day. I work with Chris Godwin. Um, I, I teamed up with the group that did the big Super Bowl party at Top Golf this year, yeah. uh, and and we're we're uh, we one of the sponsors at Chris or at um, Mike Evans Golf Tournament coming up uh, on the 11th. So we're we're tied to those guys as as often as we can be. We love them. That, that's incredible. awesome. Yeah. So Chris, I, we were talking before. So you are a big football guy. You lost some interest in baseball. So tell us how all of a sudden the transition went from loving football to finding your love for baseball again. Well, I played baseball and I didn't play football. Oh, right? I'm sorry. Yeah, it's right. just as simple as it can be. You want what you don't have. Uh, right. So yeah. um, mm. I played baseball up until high school. Mm. Um, and then at high school, I was into other things, you know, um, 
but but I watch football. It was more violent, right? It was faster, it was harder, <laughs> it was tougher, right? And and then obviously, you know, I, I watch baseball. I always watch the World Series. I always believe you watch you watch the best of the best do their best, right? And I think it's mm-hmm. something about that that's special. I'm not a huge hockey fan, but I'll go to the Stanley Cup, right? Especially yeah. when it's in Tampa. Um, I, I just appreciate the greatest in the world at their craft. Right. But but other than that, I really wasn't big into baseball. And then about five years ago, when Randall and I started working together, um, yeah, it just kind of came back. You know, I mean, baseball cards, you see them. I, I have fun with it. All these legends. I get to hang out with these guys and 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 do deals with them and, and interview. them. It's just cool. And it brought it all back. Right. The nostalgia of what was. And then I realized how freaking tough baseball actually is. Right. There's a, <laughs> it's, it's not it's not as. Uh, e- <laughs> easy as I thought it was once. Yeah. <laughs> that. No. So I, I want to get into dugout mugs. You started a company yeah. five years ago. Where did the idea come out of? Was it something that you were just talking with your partner one day or was it something you were thinking about doing? Like, tell us where this all started. Nope. It was before me. Um, so okay. my, my MO is I, I launch and scale businesses. Always have loved it. Right. Like that's my business is my sport negotiations, collaborations, sales, internet marketing, like that's my jam. And uh, Randall came to me uh, right at its inception uh, of the company. And he said, hey, man, I got this really cool idea. Um, I've sold a handful of them, you know, like and by handful, I mean like a thousand. And people love the idea. And I said, it's kind of a weird idea, man. I don't know. And I still got the mug. This is it. This is the first one he ever gave me right here. Wow. And I took it that weekend. I met John Smoltz and he signed it. And John Smoltz, he's like, this is amazing. I'm like, all right, well, that's good feedback. And then (laughs) uh, then I I talked to a couple other guys and everybody was just, oh, my God, that's cool. Where can I get it? And I said, this freaking guy came up with this weird ass idea and people love it. So I told him, I said, listen, man, if you want to take this thing for a real run, I, I know what to do. And he knew the whole other side of it, all the logistics and everything about baseball. And I was like, let's, it's a good fit. Right. And that was January 1st, 2017. So it's not even that long ago. Yeah. And, yeah. um, buddy, we hit the ground running and I don't think our feet have stopped since wow. we started, you know, it's a real blessing that we get to do this every day. Yeah, no, but, it, oh, it, it, the answer to the yeah. question though, I'm sorry. It was Randall's idea, but he was yeah. a coach at his alma mater, and there was a coach, one of his other coaches, was cutting bats in half inside the dugout, and to do a hitting drill. And Randall saw the barrels laying in the on the ground of the dugout, and he's like, "Yo, can I take these home?" Because he felt like, "Oh, I bet I can drill them out and drink from it." And the guy <laughs> said, yeah, whatever, man, that's strange. But he went home with a drill and made a few prototypes, uh, and. It, once you get to know Randall, it's not that odd of an idea because he's just a thinker. He's just a strange thinker like that. Yeah. And uh, but that's actually how it came to be. One of the reasons we call it dugout mugs is because yep. they were in the dugout, and then also we dug out you the middle. Dug of them out. I was just going to yeah. ask you that. I, I love incredible. the double entendre with the with the dugout yeah. because it's, well, it's and it's a dugout mug, and, and we yeah, think no. people are going to sit in the dugout and drink from them. Yeah. No, yeah, I, so. I, I I absolutely love the, the the name, and I was thinking that today because I, I didn't I didn't read it anywhere, but I was like, wait a second, it's called dugout because the bat is actually dug out, and it's from a dugout. Yeah. So that's uh, well, originally originally it was called Thompson Mug Company, and I think anybody who starts a business can appreciate how funny it is that you name it after yourself the first one all the time. <laughs> yeah. and, and I told him I was like, hey, man, you're not gonna like this, but yeah. I really think we changed the name. He's like, what's wrong with the name? I was like, nothing's wrong with it, but it can be better, right? So yeah. we originally were going to call it Home Run Mugs, yeah. um, but that didn't work out. And then we're driving. I remember we're driving to the governor's dinner because uh, the governor of Florida gets our mugs as the VIP gift for his governor's dinner every time he oh, launches wow. launches spring training. Uh-huh. Uh, so we were on our way down to the governor's dinner, and we're like rapping in the car, this is back when, you know, we were too broke to fly. So we're always driving everywhere and we're like, Oh my God, dude, dug out mugs. And then we came up with all the reasons why it made sense. And, uh, we shook on it and we're like, all right, dude, we're changing the name. Uh, so we, that's when we started officially going by dug out mugs. Yeah. It's, it's an amazing, it's a, it's amazing. I, I, I definitely love that double entendre. You know, I mean, my, my company, 
you know, my, my other company aside from this uh, show is playing the field. We're trying to build a date. We're building a dating app for sports fans. So you have cool. the dating and the sports both, both in one. So uh, I could definitely appreciate the, uh, where the, the concept for the name came from. Yep. Name matters. Um, oh, absolutely. Uh, and uh, so, you, so obviously, you know, we, we got this and, and, and you have um, the knob shots that you sh showed. Uh, you got yeah, yeah, knob shots. Yeah. So, so what, uh, what are all the different products that you uh, that you got over <laughs> now, there? I wish at I would have had some of them to show, but so the flagship, the the OG is the dugout mug. It's twelve <laughs> ounces, bat barrel, and then the second one we came out with is called the wind up. It's a six ounce wine glass, and it has kind of the nice uh, uh, profile to it. And then we said, well, that worked. What else? And then we started. We turned the shot, the bat handle into shot glasses and bottle openers. And then we recently came out with this right here, which is a nine ounce. Uh, it's called a shortstop and, you know, for whiskey or, or coffee. And there's one that's coming out and it's we're probably close enough that I can talk about it. So uh, we have a stainless dugout mug called the Dinger and it comes out in July okay. and it's a 20 ounce double walled screw top. It's just nasty. It's nasty. Wow. It's super practical. It's awesome. great for kids. 20 ounces keeps coffee hot for like six hours. <laughs> it's awesome. That's, yeah. That's and, and again, and with MLB, you know, cause they have deals with like Yeti and stuff like that. But yeah. uh, you know, we have a lot of customers. We have a few hundred thousand customers yeah. and we, we talk to them a lot, right? Cause we really care about what our customers think and want. Mm -hmm. um, we're definitely a customer first fan first company. Right. And uh, we're like, hey, what do you think about this product? And they said, well, well, 83 percent of them said they'll buy it with an MLB logo. So I called MLB. I said, listen, I got a lot of people that want to buy this as soon as we go live. But it's got to have an MLB logo. And I said, here are the numbers. And they said, OK, you got a license. So this one's coming out of the gates license, too. And wow. it's old school. If you got if you know, if you remember back in the day, it was the uh, Easton green machine. You know, it says Easton with the big letters down the yes. side. Yes. So that's the style that we have on these. So it looks like that old aluminum bat, uh, but it's going to say Cubs, Yankees, Dodgers down the side of it. It's going to be sick. Those Keep an eye because those are coming out in about six weeks and they're going to blow out. I am sure of it. Yeah, just uh, let you know, keep us posted and uh, yeah. you know, we'll definitely remind everybody as well. Um, yeah. But yeah, I mean, you technically answered my next question. Like, how did you go about getting, you know, all these all these products licensed? Because I know it's you know, it's, it's yeah, not easy. But it's you not guys super are super easy. Um, but my background is business, right? So yeah. I know what a business plan needs to look like, and I'm not scared of big numbers and scaling a company. So when when we talked to MLB, their first response was, "No, we're good, thanks." Uh, we have enough drinkware and it's and i was like but this isn't drink a matter of fact marco was a guy that worked for us at the time um he went back to him he's like yeah this isn't drinkware you need to take a look at this and uh, it's more nostalgic it's more collectible and we just shipped a case to mlb and just circulated it around the office that was step one then step two is you tell me a number and we'll tell you if we can do it and they gave me this huge number to them to a new licensee and we're like we'll take it and we crushed our minimums. We crushed our goals with the with them, and we've been wow. doubling or tripling year over year for three years. That is incredible. It's incredible. You it's know, incredible. I was I, I was looking on, on the site. Yeah, and do you guys have like gift sets with like the mug and the can and the, the bottle opener and like the wine glass? Yeah, are you guys coming out with sets like that? Because I was looking, I'd be great for like a gift set or something like that. We do that around Christmas. Oh, okay. uh, we have very limited releases. Um, mm. So. It's wood. Wood's hard to come by right now. Yeah. Right. Um, these are. I mean, this is the, the the. But I mean, you the laser engraving that we do on these is just incredible. So there's a. It's a lot of hands-on work. So we can only make so many. Okay. So we'll we do very limited releases right now. We did. Uh, I don't know if you saw the executive, the black mugs that we just launched. I I, I did this? see it on the site. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, dude, those are probably one of the slickest ones we've come up with but we only do 2000 of them. When we ah. launched the shortstop, we only did 10,000 of them. 
uh, whenever we get close to Christmas, we do gift sets where we do custom packaging, um, the whole set, you know, hundred bucks for all three items or something like that. Uh, but we'll only do a thousand or 2000 of them. We, it keeps it exclusive. We did a 24 hour sale the other day. Um, uh, I, I love the Latin culture, right? And, and it's all in and around baseball. And we had the sugar skull release where we have all the team's sugar skull designs uh, on the mugs and we rolled those out for 24 hours. Those were again, so that's kind of our angle with it. We always yeah. do really fun, really limited stuff, but we do it all year long, just switching it up and fans tend to dig it. But the gift sets are one that we do. That's and I want to talk yeah. about the uh, the imaging. I mean, how where did you guys come up with that? Like, how do you do that? I mean, it's just the detail is so precise, it's incredible. You got to have good machinery, man. Oh, um, okay. <laughs> like here's one, um, the thing we're doing with Mariano next week, yeah. this will give you an idea kind of what you're talking about. Yeah. We do that. And then the backside has all the career stats. That's incredible. That it's, is amazing. It's, so it we is have, amazing. we have really precise machines. Um, we have about 30 people that work under the roof right now. Okay. Um, and probably 70 in total that make the whole operation go. So, uh, we have an, a one guy and his sole responsibility is to make sure all the machines are firing on all cylinders all the time. And he's constantly training the laser techs, right? So it's a fun business, but we yeah. take it super serious. No, you should. Uh, yeah. Every, every angle of it. Um, because it's, it's, it's hard to get lost. It's, it's easy to get lost when you see 1500 mugs a day going out the door. Okay. To not think that every single one of them is, the most premium gift from one person to another. And that's what we preach to our people a lot is it's like, this is very meaningful. Every single thing you touch. So wipe it better, clean it better, etch it better. If there's a mistake, don't even send it, throw it away, start yeah. over. Right. So we're really big on that kind of stuff. So um, that's, I, I think that's why the quality is what it is, is could we take that super serious? And we, you know, we, we, um, Beat it into them, not literally, but you know, yeah. <laughs> bull whips the off the counters. Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, it's got to be pinpoint accurate if you're going to do a product for Mariano, right? I mean, yeah, for real. You you, you have to have that uh, that accurate. So and some of you, these behind you showed it, us this incredible detail. Um, and, well, and usually I, we do collaboration mugs because we work with a lot of charities with our um, Cheers to Charity initiative that we do. So we always make collaboration mugs um, and those turn out amazing. You know, the collab mugs, especially. Yeah. Well, speaking of collaboration, you showed it before the Sandlot mug, you know, working mm. with, uh, and obviously that was one of your, you know, one of your, the most fun experiences that you've had among, totally. among many of them um, was working on that Sandlot mug and, um, and, and, and meeting the creator of the Sandlot, you know, while working yeah. on it. So talk to us about, you know, how that came to be and, uh, you know, how, what the experience was like. Um, this photo, and the, share the link to the video. It's such a good video. Yeah, but this photo, yeah, everybody that, yeah. probably knows this. Uh, and David signed it for us. Legends never die. This is the one that's in that, the video. But um, I just reached out to him on Twitter. I said, yo. We make a really cool product and everybody loves your movie. And I think we need to put that picture on this mug. Wow. And he told me, he's like, um, actually, I own the rights to that photo. So we can absolutely do that. So not only, and this is something, I don't know if you saw it in there, but not only do people get the mug, which is that it's the thing wrapped around like this. But David also takes a four by six of that photo autographed by him and it comes in every mug. Oh, that's Again, incredible. it's about fan experience, man. Yeah, yeah, right? like, it is. Uh, it is. Uh, we'll get into the baseball card thing we just did next. But like, so I, I thought to myself, I mean, it's like 69 bucks. It's you get a mug that's one of a kind and an autograph photo for 79. It's like 70 bucks or seven, maybe 79 bucks or something. So it's like, what a great experience. What a great gift. And anyway, so I hit him up on Twitter and I said, hey, man, let's do something fun. And he said, well, I live in North Florida and we we're in Central Florida. And I said, well, let's get in the car. And we took a videographer and we had the boom mics and everything set up. And it's this old dingy ass, like dirty beach bar, which <laughs> is perfect. 
<laughs> and we all we all showed up in like sandals and Columbia shirts and just just <laughs> relaxed. And we we were drinking Patron and because uh, the bartender showed up early. So we got some Patron and we got some some beers and we just sat there and talked about the movie. And I asked him, I was like, do you do you feel like uh, would you have a problem if I just filmed this? And he said, no. So he, actually, when you get the mug, you also get three minutes of uncut footage of us just talking about the movie and his favorite parts and secrets about the the, the cast and the set and all this other. So I just again, I wanted to create something cool that people would enjoy. And at the same time, being a fan of the movie myself and Randall was in heaven with it. You know, he just sat there at the bar, just shooting the shit with David Mickey Evans. Right. He just loved it. And, and uh, it was a cool experience, man. Um, and you're right. One of many, we're super blessed, but, but just from a non fanboy, just really cool. Yeah. Vibe. And we still yeah. talk to David very often. He's come on, done a couple lives with us just to give away free stuff to the fans. And it's really cool. It's really cool. So hey, that was if you, a if you talk to him a lot, if you want to put in a good word, we would love to yeah. have him on here. Yeah, for sure. He's, a, he's cool, man. Um, poor guy's been hung up at the house because of COVID and everything, and he makes yeah. movies that no, nobody's yeah, really tough. on set, especially in California, right? Yeah. Or New York or most places, actually. Yeah, pretty much. No, it's, it's all over the place. Yeah. Rick, you can take the next one. Oh, yeah. No, no, no. I was just going to say, I, so, I, so Dugout Bugs, I know you guys do dugouts. Obviously, I'm wearing a Knicks hat and a Knicks jersey. Have you guys thought about expanding the business and saying, okay, we do dugout mugs. Why don't we go into basketball, maybe do something with the hardwood or maybe like a basketball or the NFL with like a helmet kind of thing or something like that? Bro, I get that question every two days. And <laughs> okay. <laughs> because I can imagine sense. this etched on a, on a mug. I mean, it's, incre- well, it's listen, unbelievable. What happens is somebody sees this and like, man, wish I would have thought of that. And then their mind gets going. They're like, what else could you do? Right. And I get that. Uh Um, But but my answer will always be the same. When we stop selling mugs, we'll figure the next thing out. Okay. Right. But right now, with uh, the growth and the support, um, we just got into our seventh country. Mm -hmm. Uh, We're in this all the stadiums, all 50 states. We have a hundred other venues that we're in. And from an online uh, perspective, Mm -hmm. we're we're growing and doing all the right things. We have all we can eat right now and then and then <laughs> okay. we're rolling out this other i don't even know what's going to happen when we roll out the dinger man but it's gonna yeah. it's gonna bring some heat so nice. we're just trying to grow um scale and do it conservatively if that's yeah, r- yeah kind of conservatively um but we don't want to jeopardize quality yeah or, or, yeah or experience um so we we try to not, not let our minds get away from us. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, you said you obviously work with Mariano. You've worked with other players, yeah. Big Poppy. Your favorite player to work with throughout this whole experience? My favorite player to work with. Yeah. Poppy's a lot of fun. He puts yeah. on a great event. Johnny Damon's a trip. <laughs> okay. Uh, Johnny's nice. just great. Yeah, yeah, uh, I spent yeah. some time with Nick Swisher the other day okay. um, online, and I'm hoping to go golf and, and have a stogie with him. But he's a, a, <laughs> Nick's an amazing guy. He's uh, yeah. he's going into um, motivational speaking, right? Wow. Uh, and and well deserved. Like he's just an amazing guy. Mariano, um, fun story. When I met Mariano, I actually gave him a ride home on the first day that I met him, which <laughs> just bizarre the way it turned out. Which I, I laughed with him in all fairness. I laughed with him about it first and I know that he didn't care me telling the story, yeah. but uh, I was one of the sponsors at, uh, for all the VIP gifts at his golf tournament in Tampa, like four years ago. Uh-huh. And um, I had just had a, a daughter, she's a couple years old. My wife's like, you need to get home. You're, you're just milking this. <laughs> and I was, so uh, I was like, all right, I'll get in the car. And I started to leave and I saw Mo sneaking out the back door and he was going to walk to his house because he had a house pretty close in that subdivision. And I pulled up next to him. And I'm like, hey, uh, Mariana, you want to give you a ride home? So he hopped in the car and I ended up giving Mariano a ride home. Uh, that's Yeah, that's my claim to fame. <laughs> that, those are just incredible. That's a great experience, man. Well, he's an incredible guy, you know, yeah. and um, he's he's a better family man and faithful man than he is a baseball player. Mm-hmm. And uh, to just talk to him and, and know how sincere and genuine he is, uh, 
that was incredible. But I mean, we work with a ton of guys like Pete Rose is amazing. You know, every Pete's got a stigma to him, but uh, when I was talking to him, he's like, yeah, I've never had a drop of alcohol in my whole life. Most people don't think that they just think he's wild, crazy gambling, drinking and all the other things that came along with it. But, uh, you know, I, I commentated game three of the world series with Pete for like two hours, two and a half hours. Um, just a wealth of knowledge. It was super cool to wow. chat with him. Um, Ozzy, uh, Lance Smith. Butler's That's great. Cool. Joe, Joe Smith from the Astros is amazing. Um, like I said, big poppy for sure. But, Griffey, I got a chance to give Griff. That was a cool experience. Yeah. We don't work with him, uh, yeah. but I got to give him a lifetime achievement award in LA, and that was my guy growing up. Like I always have my hat backwards back. and swinging <laughs> back mm -hmm. ass. Word twenty four, yeah. everything. Yeah. yeah, but uh, you know, so that was kind of cool. But yeah, I mean, it's it's all of it, right? Like yeah. I, if we're talking about life and experience, I mean that that's the whole reason we built this company like this. We built this by design. That's you know, this isn't an accident. Yeah. Um, so it's really, I look at all of it. There's a few guys that really stand out because I resonate with them and their mission and their, their, their vibe, but, uh, it's really all of them, man. That's unbelievable story. Yeah. That is a fan experience right there. It really oh, is. Yeah. And not being a fanboy the whole time has been, it was tough at the beginning. Right. But now <laughs> it's just like, yeah, it, everybody is just so the yeah. same, you know, nobody, so I, I called like Brandon Lau. I touched base with his wife. He gave a Pete Rose mug to his dad. And I asked his wife, I said, I, Madison, I was like, hey, can you get him? So he's like, oh, yes. He's signing cards and Austin signing cards. And we got Randy Rosarena and G-Man Choi. And everybody's just signing stuff for us just for fun. And yeah. their agents hate it, right? Because they're like, well, what are we getting for it? And I'm like, bro, I'm just giving this stuff away. <laughs> uh, I don't even care. And Duhar, Carlos Santana, Ahmed Rosario. They okay. all sent me a hundred photos each and we just stuffed them in mugs just to send to Mets fans and Indians fans and Yankees fans. Right. So I, awesome. that's, I just love it, bro, because um, we get to work with these guys and they're cool when we're cool. And, you know, we've, we've made a name for ourselves in the space. All due respect. Like, you oh, know, yeah, we're yeah. known in the industry and um, we go at it like that. We're like, Hey, mutual respect. Let's do something fun for the fans. And they love it as much as we love it, right? Agents don't love it, but I'm not concerned with that. Because <laughs> sometimes it's not any deeper than that. They're like, well, we're promoting yeah. you and this and that. I said, man, listen, literally all we're doing is we're raising money or we're giving a fan a cool experience. Like, it's not about us making money on it. And and a lot of people don't understand that. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, a lot of people going through hard times and yeah. you know, without COVID. And, yeah. and yeah. if anything we can do to make – life better for him like why not that's what it's about amen well said 100 percent. and yeah i mean really it is it's all about the, the fans you know you you want them you want them uh to have your back throughout this whole thing and you know obviously the more the more you give you know the more you're going to get back in return 100 percent that's uh you know I mean, you don't get it back you, you had fun doing it <laughs> yeah <laughs> and, no, and, and no matter what that's I'm really what it's about yeah. yeah i'm winning no matter what you're good to go yeah um for all of you out there definitely check out you know dugout mugs all over you know dugoutmugs.com and uh, check them out all on social media because they have you know all these players endorsing the, the products like all the time i see a new video every day being posted um out there so it's it, it's great so now you're doing this thing with the with the baseball cards that you're you're sending out uh the baseball cards with with every mug you know tell yeah. uh tell our viewers you know yeah so, how to find out um, more about you know getting involved with that they're gone uh because no, you know, we're, doing, <laughs> yeah, we're doing like 1500 mugs a day right now and we only had twelve thousand five hundred packs so um, I'm big on, and I got something else. I'm trying to get, uh, do something with big league chew, you know, and just nostalgia, like what brings us back, yeah. right? Yeah. Big, throw a pack of big league chew and everything just for the hell of it. But, uh, I, I love baseball cards. Um, I had someone, we were all cleaning the house the other day and I found a big rubber made, open it up for Derek Jeter rookies, chipper rookies. Like it was awesome. Uh, it brought me back and I was like, Oh man, I wonder if I can replicate this experience for other people. So I think I got a couple, um, these were the ones. As you can see, I got this stuff everywhere, but like old school, man, like pull a Mark McGuire, 
Nice. Bogs. Nice. You know, 19, so I found a pallet of 1989 tops, which if people are collecting for money, this ain't your cart, right? <laughs> but but you rip open a 31 or 32 year old pack of cards, it's still got the gum in it, stained all over the card. It was, it was amazing, right? So they got to rip them. We just thought, what the hell? So I bought 12,500 of them. And I said, throw them in every box until, uh, until we run out. And then if people love it, we'll find something else to do. And um, a couple companies like Panini and Tops, uh, they started talking to us about what we're doing and they wanted to get involved. So I've been talking with Panini and Tops and uh, uh, Donruss and Leaf. I reached out to a lot of them. Um, and then uh, Budweiser came on board. So we're working with Budweiser. Budweiser dugout mugs are about to be available on Budweiser's website. Uh, and then after wow. that came Miller Light and Coors Light, uh, DraftKings, Lone Depot, Fox Sports, um, Sony. I mean, it's just, you know, and one thing leads to the next. Yeah. yeah, it's snowballing. And I think it all comes back to just doing the right thing every day, all the time. Just do that. And everything else just falls into place. And eventually you look back and there's a snowball chasing you down the hill, <laughs> you know, and that's where we are. That's that's awesome. You know, I mean, it's yeah, I mean, it's definitely a testament because it's it's, it's a great product. But, you know, the, the people behind it, such as yourself and Randall and, you know, your whole team, obviously doing that My right whole thing. Team. It's just you yeah, know, every it's, single one of them deserves. Every love, sing, man. Yeah, every single one of them. Uh, I just don't know their names off. The top of my head. So. <laughs> and in all fairness, I don't either because we just hired like <laughs> <laughs> we, when I went in there the other day and I felt like I was on an episode of like. And Todd. Uh, I know Todd. Yeah, Todd. Uh, I felt, what was it, Undercover Boss? Like yeah, I yeah. walked in and somebody asked me if they could help me. And I'm like, I don't know if that's a good thing <laughs> or a bad thing. <laughs> you know, because I, I spend most of my time. I work from home. I got two little kids and yeah. everything. but. Uh, so I work from home a lot, but they're just growing so much down there and nobody leaves hardly. We rarely, we have rarely have people leave our team. Um, and, but we keep adding more like six, we added six people in the first four weeks of COVID last year. So a year ago, we put in like four to six, seven new people in the first two months. It was crazy. And then it just kept going, man. Um, so yes. Uh, I, I try to get down there and meet everybody, but it's tough. It's tough. We got a lot yeah. of people uh, in this organization now. Thank God. So I don't want to put you on the spot, Chris. So you, you are, at the beginning, you talk about you're you're a business guy. You like building new businesses. Yeah. How how long do you see yourself before you you're doing the next endeavor? Because you know we're always looking for that next sort of mountain to climb or whatever. I mean, is this kind of your your? I don't want to say the pinnacle, but is there something on the horizon maybe in the near future? Um, yeah. So I have a lot of passions, right? Okay. Um, I love to travel. Uh, I love photography. Um, love hanging out with my girls. I love experiential kind of stuff. Um, so fortunately th this, my position here allows me to do that because okay. of the valuable people that we have in place. Um, my time, I'm not spending 60 and 70 hour weeks like we were when we started, you know, it's more like 15 hour weeks, which is a blessing. Right. Because yeah. I got all these good people. So I'm able to start diving into a few things. I've always done consulting. Um, I, I always believe that there's a lot of good people out there. Right. And if you and I know how to help them do what they're doing better than they're doing it. And and uh, so I do periodically uh, do consulting. But, you know, dugouts, my my number one, ninety nine point nine percent of the time. But we're also. Um, growing this company exponentially. And I have a feeling, put it like this, we're growing it to sell it if we want to. Wow. But we'll make that, we'll make our mind up down the road. But we're, we're growing um, rapidly and there's a lot of people already paying attention. Yeah, I so, mean, it's yeah. incredible. I'm on the MLB site right now. It's, it's, it's just incredible, these mugs. I mean, Chris, this is great work, man. I'm going to get a Yankee mug because I, I got to get myself a, Get to one of the black ones, man, before they sell out. They are which so one? Is, which one is that? The it's called it's, uh, dugoutmugs.com forward slash executive. Oh, okay. Get the executive know. mug. There's only 2,000 of them, and they're nasty. Okay. I absolutely love them. And there's one we got coming out because I'm a big, you know, I'm a big uh, pro-America guy. Yeah. Um, 
you know, I, I've been able to live the dream and many people I know, I started with nothing. Oh, right? wow. These are dope. Sorry. See? See? That's okay. <laughs> That's okay. That's yeah. okay. Um, but uh, what I was going to say is, is we have one, we have a, a limited, very limited, like a hundred of them. They're all hand painted American flags, like tattered flags yeah. for 4th of July that we're going to roll out. Um, so, yeah, we have a lot of really cool limited stuff, but those are probably one of my favorite. Everything I always wear black and gray. Like that's I I like that. So these are really sick. You should get one. Yeah, I'm ordering one right now. Not a bad move. <laughs> Wait till you get it. Mike's gonna be pissed. He's like, I got the regular. No, it's still a dope mug. Like I get that. No, no, no. Yeah, no, I, I no, absolutely. Obviously, I got my uh my my Mets one, but I might uh I might uh, splurge on a an executive one as well for the for the Mets. Uh, yeah, I ain't gonna. You're a Mets fan. I ain't gonna be holding that. Yeah, yeah. I I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm the Yankee fan. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> we work a lot with the Mets, man. Um, Pete Alonso just did a cool. Did you see the video he did for us? That was really I cool. I did not catch that one. No. Yeah, it's on League of It's probably on our Instagram or something. But uh, he talks about drinking beers at him after the game and stuff like that. Pete's just an amazing guy. He's yeah. from down here in Tampa. Um, so we've been able to collab with him and a handful of others on the Mets. Um, and we work with seven line army, you know, okay. those guys are awesome. Nice. And then, and then Yankees, I mean, you name them, Mattingly, Girardi, Luke Voigt. We did some cool stuff with Luke Stanton. Uh, I saw the Stanton on the website. Yeah. 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 Was that, yeah, when, he, that when he did he take that picture when he signed it with the Yankees? Yeah, that was at the winter meetings. He was walking around. Him and Cashman were walking around with dugout mugs in their hand, and one of my people <laughs> snapped a picture of him. <laughs> that is awesome. That's probably what. That's probably why he signed. Is because they told him if he did that, they were going to give him a mug. Great. That's probably what it was. Why you know, wouldn't you sign that? Voigt, we worked with Luke. You want to talk about just a good dude? Luke Voigt yeah. is a good dude. And I'll give him a shout out for real. It was so cool working with him. And uh, then, you know, he had some bad, he had some mugs and all this other. And that next season he came out just firing on the ball. Yes. And it's been really weird. Like every time we, we work with somebody or they, they have, they get a mug or they take a picture with a mug, they start playing out of their mind. So we always take credit for it. Jokingly. Awesome. I'm sorry. I'm, it, I'm ordering a mug. I didn't mean to it, like, it's, no, it's, <laughs> It's amazing the trajectory that you guys that you guys are on, and and it's just a testament to doing the right thing. And uh, over and over, you know. That's it, yeah. I mean, uh, I I don't you know I don't have to say you know good work because you, you see it, you know you you see it for yourself. And and at the end of the day, as as long as you're content with whatever you're doing, and and you know that you're, you know, you're giving the fans the like you said, you're the chief experience officer, mm. you know, and, and that's what it's all about for you. And, uh, you know, you could definitely see that and it's, uh, it's returning in spades right now. Yeah. Chris, you're doing great that. work, man. Uh, keep Thank it you. up. Oh. You can always come back. I already ordered my mug. I don't have a confirmation oh. when it's getting here, but it's on its way. So nice. I'll, next time I'm on, I'm gonna once I get it, I'll, I'll put it on. But it's it's all uh, right. Maybe incredible. maybe we'll sneak you. Maybe we'll sneak you a, sh a Yankee shot glass in there as a little bonus for you. All right, appreciate Ooh, that. Man. Look Thank at you. that. Look, look at, at that. that. That's yeah. uh, that's uh, just, chief just experience. Tell me, man, I know a guy. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Chris. Chris, thanks for no. coming on, man. This is great. This is awesome. Come back anytime, please. Awesome, yeah. fellas. Hey, oh, you're take always, care, man. Always welcome. Keep doing your thing. See you. Right. Thanks a lot. Thank Have you. a good night. Take it easy. All right. There it is. Oh, dugout man. mugs, everybody. Uh, you, got, you got you got your uh, dugoutmugs.com at dugoutmugs on social media. You know, it's they're all over the place. You know, they're on yeah. MLB. I mean, you, you heard him. He's got Budweiser. You know, Miller Lite, Colors Course Light. You know, it's just uh, it's all snowballing. You know, and you're gonna find them pretty much everywhere. So. Yeah. Um, and you it's know, just, it's, they're, they're awesome. I mean, these so are great. You want to get like a gift for somebody? I mean, these Father's are Day is coming up. Yeah, Father's Day is coming up. So definitely, uh, you know, definitely take a look at there and you know, get them a mug of their of your father's favorite team. You know, yeah. I mean, it's as simple as that. I yeah, mean, that's that's the simplest gift idea you could possibly come up with. You yeah. know, for anyone that's a baseball fan. Yeah, it says uh, you know? two or three and, and, and and you don't even have to do it. You know. Uh, for the team, you know, they have other uh, other options out there as well. So, yeah. 
It says uh, it's coming in two or three days in transit. So I'm very excited for this. It's the executive mug, folks. Check it out. It is dope. It is dope. There you go. But it's limited edition. So you got to jump on it right now. Yeah. Um, it's, if, he, uh, if, he can get a, if he can get a Knicks one, uh, that would be awesome. But, you know, listen, you can't uh, – Oh, there you, you go. There it is. Okay, perfect. So yeah, oh, that was a great interview. That was fun. Oh, it was. It was. It was. An I was you know, bad. when he when he mentioned Johnny David, I was gonna say I hope he wasn't driving, but I didn't want to go there. I didn't want to. I didn't want to. You know. Yeah. No. Uh, yeah, yeah, the, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> and you know what, Nick Swisher, as you know, I'm a, I'm a Mets fan. I don't. There's no no secret. I'm not huge on on the Yankees, but obviously my. You know, my opinion has changed since now, you know, talking about sports and, yeah. you know, doing the show and everything. But I've always like this. I've always liked Nick Swisher. Like, you know, the whole time he was he was there and, and wherever he was, it just, you know, something about him. Like he just he's a free uh, spirit, man. He's a free spirit. He's very free spirit. And, that, you know, I, got, I guess I kind of like. You know, like like Brandon Nemo, you know, Nemo, like I like him. Um uh thanks a lot chris again for, you, for chris. coming on uh it was an absolute pleasure and you're always welcome here yes anytime um uh what you call it yeah i mean i just i i like those those free spirits and you know obviously johnny damon i felt was when he was with the red he's Sox, a, he's and, then, and then the he kind of you know, you can, you can i know but i felt like i felt like a lot of that the freedom got weighed down when he went to the Yankees. Uh, that's just my uh, opinion. He had a shave, yes. Yeah, uh, but that, come on, that was a big difference. I mean, he had it, he had the whole Jesus thing going on, and uh, <laughs> then then all of a sudden he was he you, had you, nothing. You have to understand something though. When you come to the Yankees, I mean, he came to the Yankees. <laughs> Derek Jeter was that tastes good out of out of these yeah. bucks. I'm just, gonna, I'm just gonna you have play. you have Derek Jeter there. You have uh, you have Derek Jeter there. <laughs> You have uh, a Rod, Jorge Posada, Mariano Rivera, Joe Girardi was the manager of the team at that time. The Bathy came on, um, AJ Burnett came on. You know that the Yankees are corporate, right? You know you got to shave. Mm -hmm. You got there's a way we do things here. I mean it's a corporate team. So. My three favorite Yankees in in my like you know just yeah. you know of me watching them were. Um, Tina Martinez, yes, Nick Swisher, and okay. Paul O'Neill. Oh yeah, O'Neill with the fire. He was he was the heart and soul of that team. You know, yeah, he was, you know, when he was on there, it was he was he was it. He was that heart and soul of that team. No, my favorite Yankees uh, growing up, obviously Mattingly, because I yeah, you know, a younger Mattingly was you know Donnie Baseball with the yeah. mustache and mm -hmm. playing first base. He was big. Obviously Jeter, because I grew up with that. Um, he was one of my favorites, and uh, I, I'm with you. I love Tino Martinez. I mean, I will never forget that home run in game was a game four, I believe, of the World Series where he hit that bomb. But obviously, if you're if you're a Yankee fan, grew up in our Derek Jeter. So, like when I get my next jersey, which is going to be a Yankee jersey, it's going to be a number two. It's going to be a Jeter. Yeah. Well, uh, little little known secret, I once was a Yankees fan. Here we go. No, no so, I no. I was I, both. Wait, I was both. We need to get I into was, this. I, I was both. I, I've, seen you in a, I've seen you in a Giants jacket and a Giants hat. I now, I am a Giants and a Jets fan. Here we go. Oh, my God. And Listen, now, me, I, you now wait a minute. Both. You can Again. be both. No, no, you can't. Here, yes, you can. No, yes. you can't. No, Mike, you cannot be both. Uh, you either. Well, guess what? I, I have already denounced all Yankee fandom. And you know why? You know why? Why? Because the Yankees and the Mets played in a Subway Series World Series. Oh, and that's and what you from that it? point on, yeah. there was I live in Long Island, so yeah. it was either, you know, there there was there was a lot of Yankee fans talking yeah. shit. Yeah. And then, you know, there was the Mets fans taking the brunt of it. And uh <laughs> at that at that moment, at that moment I made my decision on which side I was going on, okay. and it was it was the Mets and I uh I completely denounced the Yankees. All right. So the you year denounced, 2000. Okay, fine. Then you denounce the Yankees. That's fine. Because okay. I rooted for the Yankees against the Braves all through the 90s. Always. Wow. 
I'm stunned. Oh. I'm not gonna lie, I'm stunned. And uh, I, I didn't can't believe I cannot moment. believe that uh, I didn't not, I didn't not, I I was disgusted by the arrogance <laughs> that was around me around Yankee fans. And I'm this, I'm being completely honest. You should have been proud and you should have stayed no. with us. No, but no, because fine. no, because and where's it gotten you? 20 years of misery in Agita. That's what's uh, you know what? I don't regret it for a second. All right, fine. I don't regret it for right, one right. second. I mean, I, I would like them to win one, yeah, but sure, yeah. But uh, I mean, come on, the Yankees won what one since I denounced them? Uh, 2009. Yeah, one. No, wait, wait. You did ask them. What was the first Subway Series you saw? 2000. 2000. So they won in 2000. Three? They won in 2000. Then they won in 2009 and have not won since. Because they lost, so the, by they you lost leaving, to the Diamondbacks. Then they lost to the. Yeah. So by you leaving. They, the Marlins they lost to. They lost to. They, you know, they had the Red Sox in 04. Yeah, I guess only one, right? So Just 2009. Basically, what you're saying is you're the Beloit. You left, and it's all gone to hell ever since. Well, I mean, they did win in 2000, so they won two since I denounced yeah. them. In, in, but two, in 21 won, years, they've won two. My, but my Mets have won zero. So yes. you know what? But you know what? I'm 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 glad that I was able to at least you know curtail them a little bit. <laughs> okay. <laughs> At least I curtailed them a little bit. They held yeah. them at two in 21 years as opposed to 10 in 12. Yeah. Yeah. Um, cool. All right. Whatever. Yeah, I mean, blame whatever. me for it. Yeah. I'm perfectly fine with it. And yeah. uh, I uh, stand by my decision to do this. Fair enough. Fair enough. I. I, I I don't like the fact that there's injuries just piling up yeah. in, uh, in in Mets land over there, and you know, and Steve Cohen, if you're if you're watching right now, I am put me in coach. I'm ready to play center field there you right go. now. There you go. Um, let's talk on some some of the football news real quick. Yeah. Um, I guess let's do a quick check in on the uh, NBA. NBA, real Nets, quick. Boston. Uh, Nets won 130 to 108. Yeah. So they're leading 2 0 in the series. Lakers are about to start right now. Lakers are about to start. Milwaukee is up on the Heat 2 0 in the series. Yeah, uh, Nuggets uh, tied up the series against the Trailblazers. Uh, Grizzlies upset the, uh, the Jazz uh, the other night. And then uh, the Hawks and Knicks play tomorrow. Um, yeah, Lakers Suns about to get started. Mavericks Clippers, uh, likewise. Yeah, the Yankees are down six um, one in the ninth. Okay, what are the what are the Mets doing here? Uh, I'll tell you right now. One second. Mets are. Mets are. I don't think they're playing today. Three to one, bottom of the eighth. Oh, so okay. the Grom got a little bit of run support. It looks like. Look at that. Um, Only guy to go to the Hall of Fame who, who probably won't get to three hundred, <laughs> which he should. Uh, oh, yeah. quick shout out to Phil Mickelson at 50 years yes. old winning the PGA Championship yesterday. That was quite a scene, huh? And uh, Vegas, uh, 25,000. Vegas has to pay those people their money. Pay that man his money. Plus, what was it, 250 to 1? What was 250 to 1? It was plus 25,000. 25,000. So you take away the two zeros. Yeah. yeah. 250 plus to 1. 250 to 1. I, and I, you know what? I mean, granted, he's older, but the guy's been there before. I mean, it's called the Masters. I mean, he is a master, right? <laughs> uh, at his craft. So, yeah. um, and I and I get it. There was a lot more favorites, but two fifty to one. That's that's big odds. That's man. Some serious odds. Like that's pretty much Vegas saying you have no shot. Is what that is. Yeah, like that's what I'm saying. Like, all right, like a hundred to one. Okay, I mean, hundred to one is still. You know, decent odds. Yeah. You know, like, um, but you're paying out two fifty to one on. You know, I mean, what did somebody uh, bet like three bucks and won like eight hundred? And then you know, there's people they betting a couple grand and winning. You know, some serious money, man. Women, you know, and some people were parlaying and shit and winning <laughs> serious, serious cash. 
Oh. Dude, Vegas must. You're right, though. Those 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 uh, sports that's folks must be so like high. what? That's that's uh, that's pretty high for yeah. for that. Like you you're just. I, I, you're either begging them to not even touch Phil Mickelson with that mm-hmm. with that number, yeah. And you say you know, you're trying to put that like reverse psychology, like yeah, that's never going to happen, so I'm not right. even going to put my money. But that's I mean that's pretty money. much what that was. But but you know, when you're gambling, you want to go on the long shot, and you know that's not like the longest of long shots. I mean, the guys won it multiple times before. Yeah, you know, yeah. it's not like it's not like you're just betting on this like no name guy. That just comes into the, you know, to the masters cold. You don't know him from a hole in the wall. And then, yeah. you know, and then he he goes on and wins it, which has happened before anyway. Right. Yeah. Um, but I mean, this is, you know, this is Mickelson. I mean, yeah. 50 years uh, old, man. I mean, he beat Bryce DeChambeau and Brooks Kepka, Dustin Johnson, and and uh, you know, incredible man. And John oh, of Rahm, course, of I course. Mean, he, he beat he beat very good um golfers are around yeah, him, of course. Yeah. The best and uh, you know kudos to him but i just think 250 to one is just is ill-advised on vegas is uh yeah. but you know what vegas is going to uh survive this they'll be fine um because you know when all is said and done vegas is still gonna come out on top yeah and that's just the way it is um but yeah let's talk a little bit about the nfl so they're Number one, 30 out of 32 teams are already ready for full capacity in September. Indianapolis Colts and the Denver Broncos are the two teams that are not ready as of yet and working on it. So, Well, I think they're waiting for the the vaccination numbers to go up a little bit. So, Yeah, but I think that should, you know, come come September, I don't think it's going to, you know, 30 out of 32, I've already said yes. So I think we're going to be – Pretty much full go all through that the NFL and and look at the NBA. I mean, you got the you know the Knicks selling out at thirteen thousand, and then they added another two thousand tickets. You know because it was yeah. just going so quickly, and and they were able to you know get away with it and and and, and get people in those arenas, and uh, it's just going to go up from here. Uh, I mean that's just that's just the way we are trending right now. Um, so. We're all getting back to normal slowly, yeah. but surely as far as, um, you know, as far as attendance at sporting events go and, and really and anywhere the, else. Listen, the good news is they announced today that uh, 50% of the, the 50% of the country is fully vaccinated. So that is great news to hear. You know, that means everything's going to open up even faster now. Um, you know, once they hit, I think once they hit 70, I mean, they're doing about 2 million a day. I mean, they get to 70, it's back. It's it's back to normal, you know. Yeah, it's back to normal. I think at the end of the year and we're gonna get there. We're gonna yeah, we're gonna get there. And and but that's gonna be great, man. To see <laughs> MetLife the second Sunday in September packed mm-hmm. uh, as the Jets first Sunday up. too. The Giants right. will be playing there. They're playing. They're playing. Is it the first Sunday they're playing? I'm sure. I mean, yeah. what? I mean, uh, you you would think that they have a game every week, right? Yeah, you know, I know, but they usually start the season the second Sunday in. Uh, Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Second yeah. Sunday, and I get what you're saying. You know what I'm saying? So second Sunday yeah. in September, I think they're they're going to get started. But it's just going to be great to see, man. Yes, because it's, it's after Labor be, Day. Yeah. It's going to be, and it's going to be just absolute chaos out there. I mean, sheer pandemonium out there. It's going to be unbelievable. Oh, so, I mean, I'm people excited. are going to relish in it. Oh, yeah. in this. You the know, tail, I mean, the, t- the tailgating is going to be fun. I mean, it's just <clears> hey, be, hey, I mean, I mean. Not gonna, not gonna say it's a coincidence or whatever, but the second that Zach Wilson and his whole offensive line go to an Islanders game, they go and win two straight. I don't know. Um, uh, Zach. I mean, come on. And here's the thing: I like the fact that Zach was drinking water while his <laughs> offensive line was pounding out beers and going nuts. <laughs> yeah, well, they they have a little bit more uh, tolerance. Yes. Uh, with their size. Yes. Um, so uh, were they using know- dugout mugs? I don't know, but man, he should. They should come up with something like hockey pucks or something. I don't know. Yeah. That'd be great. Um, but, uh, yeah, man. That's uh, uh, that's. So that's, I mean, yeah, there, there's definitely some a little bit of news in in the NFL. Julio Jones didn't yeah. know he was live the other day on uh, Undisputed with Shannon Sharp, and uh, he said, "I'm out of there," and he does not want to play for the Atlanta Falcons anymore. Pretty much, I and thought he, he was live. 
He said he did not know he was live. I, I'm, I'm sure that could be like a reality TV show. I didn't know I was live. Yeah. Um, but whatever. It's how you want to look at it. I'm sure he knew he was live. Yeah, I'm sure. Um, because they're, you know, they're not letting a player just go and talk to like you know professional broadcasters and not have it cleared by their PR people and you know the agents would never let that happen. Yeah. Um, but he wants a trade. His potential landing spots on where he wants to be traded are the mm. New England Patriots and the Tennessee yeah. Titans. Uh, you know, uh, if he goes to Tennessee, man, that's a Super Bowl team right there. Mm-hmm. That is I mean, you, you still have to compete against the Chiefs, but the, they've beaten the Chiefs before, so mm-hmm. I think so. I mean, with Henry and then Julio and then A.J. Brown. Yeah. That's – that's scary. Yeah. And then you have to play Derrick Henry in 17 games? I wouldn't want to play him. Yeah, I mean, the guy's going to clear 3,000. I wouldn't want to play him. Um, so, yeah. yeah uh, it, that's uh, – yeah, that that's gonna be uh, that's gonna be insane if if he ends up over there and then I don't know Julio with with Cam or well who's it gonna be is it gonna be Mac Jones uh, you would imagine it's Cam right I think it'll start at Cam and then eventually it's gonna be Mac <laughs> depending Jones. on how the season I mean, depending goes. on how the season goes but I look they got eight play eight starters that didn't play coming back they they drafted a couple of players uh, you got Edelman's Mac Jones back gone. there Edelman's right? gone who, who else did they they picked up a couple of wide receivers, right? Did they signed Nelson Aguilar. I think they did. Yeah, they did. Um, they signed a couple of receivers. I mean, look, Belichick is is is. Yeah, I mean, he's just he's a genius, right? Yeah. So, yeah. Um, and uh, Aaron Rodgers spoke yesterday. Yeah. Um, <laughs> did you see the Kenny Main? Uh, yeah. He, Kenny, off? Kenny Main oh, gave nice. the big fu, and that was it. Uh, Look, Aaron just wants to win, and I think he's realized they wasted his talent. They haven't surrounded him with yeah. talent. They drafted this kid, uh, Justin Love, and uh, Jordan Love. Jordan Love, excuse me, Jordan Love, and you know he sees that he's got maybe four or five years left. He sees what Brady did in Tampa, and he's like, "Look, you know, either I'll leave or you surround me with players." But uh, you can't listen. Th- here's where he, I disagree with him. He was in the NFC Championship game two years in a row, right? Uh, San Francisco destroyed him. Yeah, and then he gets into a game, a home field advantage in a game against Tampa Bay, a team from ten, that's freezing and they're from Florida, and he had the ball and he couldn't. They didn't make some plays. They were in the red zone four times. They couldn't come away with touchdowns. Yep, can't blame can't blame the organization there, man. Now they were they wrong to take the ball out of his hands and kick a field goal? Absolutely. I mean, he did have some pretty Charles, on man. the money. He did have some pretty on the money passes. No, he did. That Devontae Adams just happened to drop. Or, right. you know, uh, Stan, uh, who was it? MVS, I think, dropped one. Yeah. You know, I mean, it can't – I mean, Rodgers can't catch the ball, too. No. And, look, I, I get it. I mean, I mean granted, it. like, it's it's a high field. You know, it's a high uh, level there. Yeah. And, uh, you know, people – nerves are kicking in. But yeah. uh, I, mean, I, know, I, I have I know a little league. bit – but if they drafted a wide receiver instead of Jordan Love in the first round that could have panned out to something – you know that that could have made a difference. Uh, well, maybe they could have drafted a corner who doesn't give up a touchdown before the half. You know, that was just pathetic. Yeah, so that was that was pathetic. What was Scotty Miller, right? Yeah. My goodness. Yeah. Um, there was something. Oh, Watson still wants a trade. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, legal issues be damned. He's still saying I would not show up to OTAs and I don't want to play for Houston anymore. So, I mean, it is, it is what it is. Yeah, he's he gotta, just, he's, he's got to he, let it play out, man. He, he, he wants out and uh, they got absolutely zero for him. Draft compensation. The guy might not show up to play. He might not be allowed to play. <laughs> I mean, we, that still is to be decided. Yeah. On uh on, on um you know on, on how that goes. But yeah, I mean, um anything else around uh, I I remember seeing something else in the NFL, but it's slipping my mind right now. I think we're good. I think we covered it all tonight, man. Yeah, I think yeah. we're good. Yeah. Um 
Well, we want to thank Chris Dennard again yes. for, for coming on and uh, talking to us about dugout mugs and, you know, uh, love the, uh, the trajectory of where they got, these guys are headed. Uh, please go and check them out. Dugoutmugs.com uh, at dugout mugs on all social media. Go get yourself an executive mug before they're all sold out. And uh, they've got, you know, a million other things out there too. They got those knob shots. They got the bottle openers. Father's Day is coming up. Mm-hmm. And then as you heard Rick say, it's, you know, a couple of days and, and, you, and you get it in your hand. So, uh, you know, get that ball rolling or the bat rolling or whatever. I don't know. Yeah. Whatever. Um, but, yeah, just just go for it. And uh, we have another great show in store on Thursday before we take a mini little hiatus for the Memorial Day. And uh, and, and next week we will – we will be off uh, yeah, just to sense. get a little refresh. Yes. Um, and we'll be back. Yeah. Well, we'll be back the um, the next week. Uh, Rick's going to be drinking a lot of beer out of the dugout mug that he gets in a couple of days. Yeah, I, will be, I, can't, uh, I, I, I can't wait to get that thing. I'm, I, I'm, uh, I'm excited for this. I'm, and then, uh, yeah. But thanks for tuning in, everybody. Uh, tune in tomorrow night, game two, Knicks, you know, Hawks, Knicks. We try to tie up the series and go back to Atlanta. And take a game over there, and hopefully Julia shows up. Hopefully Tibbs uh, uses IQ a little more, doesn't sit Barrett out for the first six minutes of the fourth quarter, and gets him back in, and gets mm-hmm. Obi Top in some more pick and rolls on the wing and on the and from the top of the key. So we'll see if that happens. But until then, we'll see y'all t- Thursday night. Deuces. Good night, everyone. <laughs>